Thank you, Dr. Bosserman, for that lovely and <clears throat> somewhat notorious welcome. And we're going to be talking about goddesses. So sit back, enjoy your coffee, and I'd like to tell you a story. Myth. Why have these things fascinated man through time? What is it about these stories? These stories really represent the inner chronicles of our own psyche. They're our potentials. They're what's in us. It's what, it's what affects our behavior, affects our emotions. And I think they fascinate is the really reason is because they are us. Now, Orestes was a young Greek fella who murdered his mother, who murdered her husband, who was his father, who married, murdered his daughter, who was his sister. You don't, did you get all that? Uh, essentially, they were one of the first highly dysfunctional families, okay? Uh, how many of you have sat with your granddaughter, your daughter, or just enjoyed this wonderful Disney film yourself, Mulan? And it tells the story that's based on an ancient Chinese folktale of a young girl who is an only child and very close to her father, and the country's at war, but her father is too ill and old to go fight. So she disguises herself as a boy, she goes off to do battle, and she really gives those bad guys a, um, a time for it. So when we need that cool thinker, when we need to be that strategist, and we need that so often in our modern world, in our work, or maybe even in our families dealing with our kids, um, it's that Athena within us, that inner pattern that we would call upon uh, and, and access. And it's Aphrodite, also probably equally known in her Roman name as Venus. And here she is looking in the mirror at herself. When a woman really lets her Aphrodite take over, have you ever seen these gals, no matter where they walk, if there's a mirror? <laughs> Think about things within yourself that may need to be awakened. All of these stories are meant to tickle something in your own mind uh, that might be waiting to come forth. Did anyone see Miss Congeniality? Okay, great, fun movie. Sandra Bullock's an FBI agent, right? She doesn't want any part of this feminine business. She's in the man's world, she's tough, she wears her outfits, she has a unibrow, and she's just doing her thing. And she's given the assignment that she doesn't want to take to go undercover in a beauty pageant. And indeed she does. And in that process, she finds a whole nother part of herself. And in this beautiful Botticelli painting, which is in Florence, we see Venus, or Aphrodite, in the center. And in this gorgeous gown covered with wildflowers, we know that's Demeter, whenever we see a goddess in wildflowers, as she's bringing spring alive. And notice to her right is pale Persephone, and who's threatening up there um, to carry her away but Hades. Persephone really rec represents that vulnerable part in all of us. Persephone is that innocence, that vulnerability. But remember, Persef Persephone walked on the dark side, and she goes back to it every year. And in the underworld, she is the guide for the newly dead. So in our own lives, we may have walked on the dark side. The loss of a loved one, divorce, a brush with addiction, cancer. And when we come out of that dark time, we can serve as a guide to our fellow women. So think of Persephone with that. But remember that Hera represents both the best in marriage, the good wife, the regal wife, moral, um, uh, devoted, true, but you can go too far. And when you do, that vindictive, jealous part of you, and you can find yourself turning people into smoke.
Do you remember what they do with it? They take that money and they start a crisis center for women. And they all invite their husbands to the opening of it, you know? <laughs> And you know, it's just like we can look within us, we can find these positive things, we can transform ourselves, even if at times these other parts of us might be getting out of control. Here are four of my favorite ladies. Okay, with this group, I think we can all name them. We have Rose Nyland, okay, from where? St. Cloud, Minnesota, who is our wife. Now, Rose has quite a bit of Aphrodite in her as well. We have in the middle Dorothy Zorbat. I can never say that word. And she is very much our what? Look at how regal she is. You can almost picture her with a helmet and a shield. She's very much our Athena, okay? And Blanche Devereaux on the left is our, of course, our Aphrodite. And in the figure of Sophia, Dorothy's mother, Sophia actually means wisdom in Greek. And in Sophia, we see the wise older woman, the Hecate, but probably is arguable how much real wisdom Sophia passes on during that series. I also want to point out these ladies are holding Emmys, but look who the Emmy is. Who's that winged golden goddess that they're holding? It's Nike. These women, They, they're us. I was in the doctor's office a couple weeks ago and I saw this ad in a women's magazine, goddess, wor goddess worship, find the mythical beauty within. And it was for a makeup ad. Now, I'm nothing against makeup, nothing at shopping, I love it too, but we are so much more than just that outside Aphrodite beauty. Because these stories, these myths, thinking about them, thinking about them in our own lives, it's instructive, entertaining, outright fun. But let me tell you, it really has the power to transform. Believe it and trust that each one of you has it within yourself to go deep, to bring these things out, and to be transformed. Thank you.